tour of other gemstones, Roman numeral eight is Garnet. Garnet is a catch-all name for a suite of about 20 different minerals, just like tourmaline was. And so this is going to, we're not going to go into all of them, but we're going to go into the five main species of garnet that are used to produce gemstones. When we think about garnet, we think about this kind of crystallography. It tends to be a darkish red color. They form these little soccer ball crystals, in this case in a metamorphic rock. Well, this is one of those species called almondine, which is faceted to make um, red gemstones. But if your birthday is in January, you are not required to only have red as a piece of jewelry. You can have almost any color of the rainbow because garnet will provide that to you. So let's say January birthstone. This is a stone also that's just been used throughout antiquity. Used throughout antiquity. So it's fairly well known as a gemstone, and it's just one that doesn't cost so much. Let's go through this mineralogy. We're going to set this up like we did with tourmaline, and we're going to make a little table here to go into the main species of garnet that matter to us as gemologists. Well, crystal, it's dictated by composition. Well, all of the compositions have the same crystallography. So let's say crystallography is shared and it is it always crystallizes in the isometric system and it tends to make these dodecahedrons dodecahedron which is 12 sided shape so we can see dodecahedrons here none of them are fully exposed but if you went around and counted all the faces you would get up to 12. I can't draw a dodecahedron quickly but if you think you can why don't you pause and draw a dodecahedron in right here. Well composition is the main control on our different species of. So we're going to say compositional control. I'm going to go deep a little bit here with some chemistry. The chemical formula is well, here we go. It's X3, Y2, Si3, O12. But X is not an, a chemical element, and neither is Y. These are our space holders, and they're going to be space holders for different cations, depending on which species, okay? So, for example, this red variety here, almondine, for example, here's what we're going to do. We're going to say almondine and that we're going to head up a table. Well, almondine that's red there, in the X spot, we can put red as its color, in the X spot, it has an iron, and in the Y spot, it has an aluminum. So this chemical formula for almondine would be Fe3Al2Si3O12. Okay, that's how we're going to organize all of ours with the different colors. So the another gem variety is called pyrope. Pyrope is purple and shades of purple. And then we have an orange type. It's called Spessartine. All right, these are the ones I want you to know. Then there is like a yellowish type. It can be green, but most of the time it's like yellowish green. It's called Andridite. And there's another variety called Grossular. These are our main gem types of garnets. So Spessartine is orange. Andridite is let's say yellow to green. Grossular, well it can be a whole bunch of different colors. It can be yellow, it can be green, it can be orange, just like more of an assortment. Uh, should I prove that to you? Let me get through this table and then I'll prove it to you with some pictures of each of these. Our chemistry of pyrope has magnesium in the X and aluminum in the Y. So it's kind of similar to pyro, to almondine. You can see how these could be cousins, right? It's just Mg and iron that are different. Well, spessartine has manganese and aluminum. So here you can also see how these could be cousins. These are the all the aluminum three. Now, andradite is totally different. Andradite is calcium in the X and iron in the Y space. And grossular is calcium in the X and aluminum in the, in the Y. All right, so these are our different compositions and the different 
elements that occur are controlled by geology. And so, in fact, right now we're just going to go ahead and put some of the geology in here as well. Almondine tends to form in metamorphic schists. Pyrope also forms in metamorphic schists or in the mantle. And they come up to the Earth's surface from the mantle, just like peridot does and just like diamond. Spessartine occurs in pegmatites. All right, so this is igneous crystallization. Andradite and grossular are enriched in calcium, and that requires a source rich in calcium, and the best source for that is the metamorphic rock marble. So they have these different geologic occurrences, which means they're also going to have different geographic occurrences. I told you I'd put in some pictures of these just to prove some of the different colors. All right, here's an andradite. Oh, too big. Let's make that andradite a little smaller. But you can see the beautiful green color, but still dodecahedrons. Here's a pink grossular. Let's move this one over. Well, can we make that bigger? Sure we can. Let's put that right there. And again, you look at the faces. That's actually our best example of a dodecahedron yet, uh, which is this one. Oh, this is orange. Orange is our spessartine. You count up all the sides. This one was not just a, a dodecahedron. This one's like a, a double dodecahedron, which means it has 24 faces, but it's related crystallographically. All right, so these are our all of our different gems. Oh, should we see a little more? I'll put a couple more, and I have a lot of pictures here. This is an example of pyrope, so shades of purple. Well, this is, notice how these are not sharp edges. They're not euhedral anymore. These are water-worn. And that's going to get us to our geologic occurrence, or at least our how we mine. Well, we can mine these straight out of the hard rock if we want to, but because they have a high most hardness of seven and a high specific gravity of like four, we can find these as alluvial deposits. So let's go ahead and put some of that information up here now. Let's put up our, uh, let's see, how do we do this? We're going to say, did we have a number? I'm just going to say it was number three. I don't know. Mohs of around a seven, and there is no cleavage. It breaks with conchoidal fracture. So it tends to be pretty good for jewelry. The specific gravity and density, let's do it as density here. Density has units of anywhere between 3.8 to 4.2 grams per centimeter cubed. So it is very heavy and it is erosion resistant, allowing our geologic, or at least let's say this, our mining occurrence to be two ways. We can either do hard rock, but that tends to not be how it's done. Okay, so I'm going to put a little X here. And the reason for it is it's not very valuable. Most garnet doesn't have the monetary um, value. So let's say money too low, usually, to do hard rock mining. Now there is an exception to that, and that's green garnet. Green garnets, you're gonna do hard rock mining because they're so expensive, but most of the different colors are done through alluvial mining. Or you're panning for these on river bottoms because they are hard and they are dense, like the pyropes I showed before. So um, let's do one last thing. There are other names for garnet in the trade. You may have heard of uh, Malaya garnet. There is, um, Molly garnet, there is Demantoid garnet. These are like trade names, and they have there is Savorite garnet. These are very important gem names. There is Hessenite garnet. All right, these are I don't need you to memorize all of these. And there is Rhodolite. Ro. These are things you may come up with or come across. Well, Demantoid is green and Savorite is green. And that means that they have to either be Andradite or Grossular. And so this is green and it is Grossular. And Demantoid is green and it is Andradite. And Molly is yellow-ish and it is the variety called Andradite. Now, hessenite, well, this one's orange. That means it's a spessartine. Oh, no, it's not. That's totally wrong. It's actually an orange grossular. My bad. Got ahead of myself. Rhodolite's a cool one. It's a mixture of pyrope and almondine because it is a purple to red color.
Uh, okay, Malaya, this is an interesting one. It's a peachy color. So how do you get a peachy color? Well, you have to mix a bunch of the types. So this is one where you mix a little, um, you mix a little pyrope with a little almondine with a little spessartine in a unique geologic mixing recipe, and you can get this beautiful peachy color of garnet. All right, let's go into some color and some optics part of our notes. So this is big B, color, and optics. Well, there's a lot of different stories we could have here. I think what we'll just say is that color is market driver. Of course, rarity would be the next thing, but whatever color is valuable to the market, well, that's the thing that's going to drive our price point. And the most valuable color by far is green, and it occurs in two different species. One is Savorite, which I mentioned before. It's a cool spelling, right? With a T starting before, and it's named after a place in Kenya called the Savo region. So it's this African spelling that's part of the name. It was only discovered in 1967. I think that was the year. 19, let's just say 1960s in Kenya is when this thing was discovered. And it is the biggest money garnet out there. The other green one that has a lot of value is called Demantoid. Now, Demantoid has had a much longer tradition because it was discovered in the Ural Mountains of Russia. This is a story you've heard before, right, for, for other gemstones. And so we're going to say here that this is in the 1800s in Urals. And so what happens when gemstones are found in the Ural Mountains of Russia? Well, the Russian nobility loves these. And sometimes Demantoids most famously have been featured in different like Fabergé eggs for Russian no nobility. So I'm not sure if this is so much science as it is just um, interesting to me. But if you, I were to buy a high-end garnet, I would be looking for Savorites and Demantoids. Both of them are exceptionally rare over three carats. So I'm going to say greens are rare greater than three carats. The way that Savorite forms, this is pretty sweet. Oh, should I put some pictures up of these? Yeah, let's just do it. Let's go ahead and do that. Here is an example from Omi Privé website of a Savorite set in jewelry. And here is a Demantoid. All right. So the colors are fairly similar. They both have this striking, rich green color. Well, let's, a couple other things to say. Let's just say, oh, when miners find a Savorite, this is from hard rock mining and it forms in nodules that the miners call potatoes. They are like golf ball sized, potato size, hard rock, so let's say they're in schist. So these are nodules in um, schist, which is a metamorphic rock, in primarily Kenya, East Africa. Now Demantoid, on the other hand, has only ever been found as an alluvial gemstone in Russia. There are other sources now, but they're not as prestigious as the Russian source, like Namibia is a source for Demantoid. Now one of the other things that's really neat about Demantoid is it has the highest dispersion. So dispersion produces fire, which is all the breaking the colors of the rainbow, and Demantoid has a higher dispersion than diamond. In fact, it has the highest dispersion of any of the most common gem types. So what this means is that Demantoid, if you can find it, has fire, a fantastic sparkle. It's a very interesting thing. All right, let's go down just through a couple of the more colors that matter to us. Let's talk about rhodolite. Rhodolite is that pink purple. It's very popular in the market these days. Let's show an example from Omi Privé website of a high-end ring showing this strong purple color. You can see how it starts to look like amethyst here. Certainly a strong color, fantastic for wearing about. Most of this is mined alluvially. The first discovery actually in the world was in USA and North Carolina. But one reason why this is popular is because you can get a reasonable price for such a strong color, and the gemstones are inclusion free. So you can get big ones that just are uh, optically clear, 
all the way through. That's an interesting thing about Rotolite. Uh, maybe one last thing to mention, just a couple more like um, USA. Let's just talk about USA sources. So let's go here, say sources. Now, garnets are all around the world, all around the world. And so depending on the type you care about, well, we could have a whole story. So since we're just a United States based class, let's just talk about our USA sources. Well, the this is an interesting place. In Arizona, there's something called ant hill garnets. And what ends up happening is that ants are digging into the primary deposit where there are a lot of garnets. And the ants make their ant holes, whatever. That kind of looks like a volcano, right? They come down here and there's a whole network, right? This is an ant hill, not a volcano. <clears throat> Let's put a little red up. And they do not like the garnet. And so you can find garnets sitting in the sand of the ant hills. These are big ants. So sometimes the stones are pretty big, but they tend to be less than a carat in size. <clears throat> They're a really special color because they have chrome as a trace element, and so they have a very strong red color. So that's one of the interesting commercial spots in the United States that produces garnet, strong red color. And then the last thing to talk about would be a type of garnet in Idaho, which produces garnets with asterism, star garnets. And so asterism, it can either be a four ray star or a six ray star. And it's occurring in like a purple, a purplish rhodolite. Let me just put a picture up here before we finish the notes. Here's just an image I pulled down. This was like off Etsy. I don't know the source, so I apologize. But this is just, this is a really neat place where we have, um, how do we say this? We have rutile needles. So there's our stone. And we get a bunch of rutile that goes this way through the lattice, through this way through the lattice, right? And through this way through the lattice. And when the light hits it and you polish it just right, you can produce, most of the time it only produces a, a four ray star. But these examples here, which have, the one, the two, the three, these are the six ray stars, which are shown below. And you, this is a place where you can go as a tourist and mine these. I've been there twice, and each time I found stones that you can turn um, into cabochons and show the star.